Control, a little bit different list. Patrick Chapin says Esper Blade is the best deck in Legacy. Oh, he, he referred to it as Tom Martell.deck. But it's kind of more Sam Black dot deck, but we'll yeah. not going to split hairs in this one. Uh, Nick leads off with the tropical. No other play. We've got the uh, the old school versus the new school. It is. Right? It Joshua is. Rabbit's a old school player. Uh, we were just saying before we went we went live. The average person may not realize how good of a player Josh Rabbit's is. Right, it's not a name they recognize, but you know, he he ran in the in the golden era of Magic. Both of these guys kind of from the same area. Yeah, they New are. York, New Jersey kind of area. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and then oh, you know, just looking at the matchup on paper, it you know, it, Nick looks pretty good on paper. Yeah, there's it, there's two kind of schools of thought here. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, explain Nick, what you're Nick say looks about great Nick. on paper, but it's a very complicated matchup, and so play skill is going to really come into this one. Uh, figuring out which lines to go with, incredibly important. And if Nick chooses to, there's certain lines that if Nick takes. Josh gets huge advantages on So Josh is uh, casting Inquisition of Kozilek, and Nick responds with a brainstorm to hide anything that he uh, figures is a likely target for that Inquisition. Uh, this looks like he has like, at least uh, a few forces in his hand. Yeah, a three, few, I mean, forces, three forces. Wow. Three uh, forces, Dark Blast, Innocent Blood, and Polluted Delta. And really, none of these cards are particularly good in this matchup. None of these, I should say, none of these. Uh, Inquisition uh, targets? Yeah, Inquisition targets are perfectly really good. So he's gonna take the innocent blood. I imagine he will. I imagine he will. Yes, and he does. And so uh, Nick successfully hit himself from getting, you know, too much damage done by that. Looks like he drew a yep uh, a spell, spell snare. Yep. Yeah. So that will uh, that will counter something good. Rabbits this could could counter a stoneforge. So Rabbits now has a brainstorm of his own. So he's Snapcaster Force Swords to Plowshares. So Ooh, he has a uh, he has both his Batter Skull and his Jit in his hand. Hmm, that's a little awkward. Looks like he's going to put one back. Uh, I imagine he's going to um, uh, crack this fetch, yeah. get rid of it, and that way next turn when he actually, uh, if he tries to cast a Stoneforge next turn... And, and resolves it. He right, can, it, can, it will get plus one card. Yeah, it's, it's funny how that, uh, how that works. Very awkward to be drawing your tutor targets, but uh, <laughs> Brainstorm and fetch lands just Brainstorm helps. solve a lot of problems. Yeah, I mean, you, remember, you know, you probably remember when playing Cobblade, sometimes yeah. you would just... Uh, you know, if you if you were kind of out of uh, tutor targets, you just put them back on top of your library with, yeah, uh, with, Jace. with Jace, and then you'd mm -hmm. free stone merge them up. Yeah, just get another card out of it. So, uh, so yeah, Nick very prepared for this deck. I think uh, he has uh, his sideboard is very live. Uh, he's got that uh, the Dread of Night two copies of that, which we mentioned earlier. Yeah, that's that. In uh, after sideboard, that is real big. It just deals with so many. Of Ravage's threats. So a ponder from Josh. Uh, see Stoneforge. Uh, I believe it's. Uh, is it, was that Lingering Souls? That wasn't Lingering else? Souls, and uh, I believe a, a, a Marsh Flats, maybe. Okay. Uh, so so Nick on paper, at first glance, seems to have a pretty good plan against this deck and sideboard as well. Uh, but we were just talking to Mike Flores and, and Mike. Uh, actually, very good friends with Josh. Came down here with Josh, uh, and uh, obviously rooting for Josh. Probably helped Josh prepare for this matchup quite a bit. Right. Um, he says Nick really only has so many win conditions. If they if they, they match Jaces, right? Their Jaces right. cancel each other out. Nick only has uh, like I say six. I think he said uh, three win conditions besides Jace, and Josh has access to six Swords to Plowshares. Right. Uh, and Nick can't play Knight of Souls Betrayal because that kills his his own Snapcasters and makes his Mistress Factories one ones. So and his Tar Pit will be a two one. Yeah, and, and his Tar Pit just a two one. So uh, basically, I think the plan is, if uh, if I understood Mike correctly, is that Josh is just going to try to uh, keep Jace off the table and uh, mm -hmm. use you know basically use all his sorts of plowshares to deck Nick. <laughs> <laughs> like that just happened. That he has no win plan. conditions. It is quite a plan, and that's a very old school way to way to think too. I mean, decking, uh, kind of a natural decking. Okay, so we, we've got a Stoneforge Mystic mm -hmm. from Josh getting a Spell Snare from Nick. A natural decking like that is something that you don't see very no, often anymore. But it was something that happened a lot with the old right. Drago control decks 
uh, you know, I, I'm decking you. I'm not. I'm not casting some crazy mill spell on you. I'm just <laughs> making it so you don't win until yeah. you, you're out of cards. Yep. Lingering souls from uh, Josh. With that, that resolves, and uh, he plays a uh, flooded strand. So two one ones on Josh's side of the board. Nick's side still pretty bare. Tropical island and a, uh, a fresh underground sea. Right. Nick obviously uh, having a few mana issues. He's stumbling a bit. He needs to draw more lands. Certainly, any time you have a control matchup like this, uh, drawing lands is pretty important. You need to be able to match your opponent land to land as long as possible. So, uh, end of turn, he Dark Blasts one of those spirits. Mm -hmm. uh, Dark Blast is largely dead in his deck. Uh, he, does, he doesn't have a whole lot to do with it, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I like this, uh, this plant. I mean, Lingering Souls is such a kind of card advantage machine there. Um, yeah, it is. Dark Blast kind of helps compensate for that because, you know, Nick can just mill himself. Now, knowing Josh is on the deck, decking kind of plan, maybe Dark Blast, dredging right. Dark Blast well, back no, but I, I think the whole point of using it there is that um, he, he doesn't have a lot of targets for it. Right, so there's, why, why There's no reason to say, you know, stay, uh, save it for a long time. He's really just going to sit around and try to, um, uh, you know, keep Josh from just getting out four spirits and getting him so low that he deals with them that any single threat can take him out pretty easily. Inquisition from, uh, yeah, so from Nick. Yeah. We, we We're going to get it on the table. There we go. Uh, right. Snapcaster, two swords. Vendillion four. click and force of will. Right. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, as we were chatting, Josh right. flashed back the, uh, the Lingering Souls. Uh, Nick, you know, he, he does have these force wheels in his hand. He can stop the swords, he can stop the, uh, the Vendillion click, but, you know, what do you want to, you know, what, what do you want to do with the least? Um, I'm thinking it's either going to be Snapcaster or Vendillion click. Yeah, I think I take Vendillion, I mean, I take Snapcaster. Because I feel like as good as Vendillion Click is, yes, Nick does. is going with yeah. Good as Vendillion Click is, Snapcaster represents a lot of good spells on he, its own. He's already fairly far behind, and he just uh, the Dark Blast. He can always dredge and try to get rid of Vendillion Click. The Snapcaster Mage is going to re-get a brainstorm or something like that. Ooh, another lingering souls from Josh. In for three. Uh, Nick uh, went to eighteen. Now he goes to fifteen. I imagine Josh will cast another uh, lingering souls here. He needs to just put in enough pressure on that that that, that uh, Nick is going to have to deed. He's going to have to do something, and he's you know light on land. He doesn't have a whole lot else. Maybe he has to counter spell this. You know, is, is it? Uh, it's not a card you want to counter. It's not a card you want to counter spell. No, not at all. You know, but There's at the same time, it, it does represent. Two guys. Right. Nick so. obviously wants to keep Josh off of a Jace. That Jace is going to be huge in this matchup. When you're so far behind, you do have to worry that at any point that Josh draws a Jace, you know, it, it's going to take so much for Nick just to keep him in play. So it resolves. Five tokens. Uh, and, and Josh really just needs to sit now if he wants to. He can just. You know, yeah, just sit back. Settle with hitting for five every turn. Until you deal with it. I mean, he has, he's got a three turn clock here. Two more right. turns. Make Nick tap out if, you know, if Nick gets a, a deed. Yeah, Nick no. uh, does have access to three pernicious right. deed main deck. Right. If he gets a deed, you know, that yeah. will take care of all the spirits for, zero, for uh, three to cast, zero to blow it. But uh, as will uh, Maelstrom Pulse. As will Maelstrom Pulse. But Josh, you know, well, first of all, Josh, if you want to, if he, if he pulses, can uh, simply swords one of his spirits. And then Nick has to force a will if he wants to keep those guys yeah, from dying. That's true. Uh, there we have a Jace. Yeah. That is a the uh, altered art Jace. It's a League of Legends character, for, uh, from what we understand. Yeah. I don't play that game, so I don't. I don't know. Yep. And I imagine he's. You know, this is an unfortunate use for Jace. He pretty much just has to use it as brainstorm. Uh, bouncing a token's not going to do much. Now Nick, it looks like he has another Jace. He in does. His hand. He does. So it's not the end of the world. He's going to prevent a lot of damage. Uh, Josh, who really wants to, uh, I believe he could force it, but he chooses not to. He already knows Nick's hand is just full of forces. No reason to fight over this if uh, he doesn't have to. Yeah, so Nick goes with the Brainstorm. Sees another Wasteland and uh, Liliana, I believe, and something else. And it, 
can't quite see it. The something else was the, the card. I think he's putting two okay. down on the bottom there. So we might never see it. Yeah. Now I think, well yeah, if I'm Josh, I'd definitely been doing click here. Yeah. You, you need to make Nick waste those force of wills, get as many uh, two for ones as you can right now. And that's what he does. Force of will, yep. removing force of will. Keep the pressure on Nick. Come in with a few spirits. A few spirits are going to hit uh, Nick. A few spirits are going to hit. So he could, uh, yeah, Jace. I was going to say, he's got a couple options here. So he's going to go ahead and kill Jace that way. And he's probably going to try to land a Jace of his own because yeah, he just top decked one. He definitely is going to play his own Jace here. Uh, that means Nick is going to have to force a will it. Or, uh, or you know, basically. Play his own Jace again, you know. Uh, it's, I don't know how many force of, he's got one force of will left. The problem, of course, with playing is, is playing it himself is it, he just loses it. Right, he just yeah. loses. He, he, the force of will in his hand and is now dead because he's going to take uh, five damage from the spirits. Um, take him to one. So he has really no other choice but to, uh, I think, yeah. force it and then force Jace here, yeah. Actually, that, you know, maybe, or maybe he has to let it resolve and just let Josh have the Jace for a while. Because he does force it. He needs, he goes to five, so he has to have a way to, uh, he needs to have a way to deal with these spirits because he is now dead on board. Yes, Barring yeah. something like British's Deed right here to blow him up. He's got a Liliana in hand alongside a Jace. He's got two Planeswalkers in hand. Right. Uh, I believe he just removed Counterspell to pay for that force. All right. And, uh, And uh, let's see, so now he's got a big decision here. Is he drawing yet? Oh, he's thinking about, I think, dredging Dark Blast or not. The big downside of dredging Dark Blast, of, well, one of the many downsides he does, is that, uh, okay, so he knows that none of those cards are going to do him anything. Yeah, that He can only kill one bad. spirit. He is still going to go down to one. He, has, he can't play Jace. And I, I think you have to do it on your turn. Um, oh, looks like he did it on Josh's turn. Josh, okay. Does Josh have uh, any standard counter spells? He has a one. Oh, he only has one actual counter spell. But you don't want him to, you know, randomly just counter it. Yeah. And then you're just totally dead. So now uh, Joshua attacking with uh, with the force remaining yeah. spirits after losing one to Dark Blast, but. Nick on a precarious one life here, it looks yep. like. It's and, gonna, uh, it's, next card's got to be a pulse or a, uh, or or a, a deed. deed. That is the only thing that's going to save him. Uh, Stoneforge Mystic from Josh. Mm -hmm. Stoneforge getting their equipment. You know, if, if he draw, even if he draws a deed, he's not going to have the, the mana to both deed and kill the Stoneforge. Yeah, this is... Uh, I, I believe at this point it's... It's on to game two. But, yeah, uh, I, think, I think there's no question that Nick is uh, stumbling on that early mana, just put him too far behind. He had all these force wills, which you know work great if you're trying to get a Jace to play. Do not work so does not work so great um, if you're in a situation where you are behind and he was behind, had a two for himself a one two for two for one himself a few times, and that let Josh Rabbits take the first game. Yeah, Josh gave him the still had all these Jaces and uh, Force of Wills. <laughs> <laughs> little Rubbins, little Rubbins. Nothing wrong with little Rubbins now and then. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting looking at, like like we were saying, Nick's, uh, Nick's deck is set up for this kind, of, uh, this kind of matchup. But like you said, he stumbled on early mana uh, and we didn't see any of those cards. He's got, you know, going down just his, his main deck uh, there was no Pernicious Deed, of which he has three. There was right. no Maelstrom Pulse, that's one, it's but there's nice just four trail. cards. No Knight of He's got five cards there that uh, that would have been great right. right there if he could resolve one. The, the card he doesn't have, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, Nathan Holt, uh, Walk the Plains. He, did, uh, mm -hmm. he, he pointed out that if Nick had been playing Stormcrow, <laughs> he could have blocked spirits all day long. But you know, Wizards has been talking very heavily about banning Stormcrow. Stormcrow is just being too good. Cover Mirror, we're pretty sure that's on the next ban list. Yeah, probably. It just, it's just much so much better than Stormcrow. <laughs> Stormcrow is already pretty far up there in terms of uh, cards in the watch list. So 
Nick might have made a mistake <laughs> by not including it. I don't know. I just don't know. Um, now, sideboarding. Nick has a... He has two Dread of Night. We yeah. already talked about that. Dread of Night, again, a card you might not remember unless you were playing uh, 12 years ago. In fact, I completely forgot what it does. Why don't you tell us, Sam? It's a, it's a, it's a one-mana black enchantment from uh, Tempest. It says all white creatures get minus one, minus one. All of them. Josh Rabbits has a few white creatures. In fact, he just won the game with uh, five of them on board, right. not even counting the Stoneforge Mystic. Not even counting the Stoneforge Mystic, Stone Forge Mystic uh, yeah. One Dread of Night right there kills them all. Except for the Stoneforge Mystic. Except for the Stoneforge, <laughs> but it kills all those, you know, one ne mana. Neutralizes deals. that Stoneforge Mystic one mana, to some degree. Yeah, a one mana black enchantment deals with uh, four Lingering Souls and everyone that's flashbacked in Josh Rabbit's deck. That card is certainly, certainly going to come up. Uh, it's also got Scavenging Ooze, which uh, is a nice, nice beatdown kind of guy. It's a. Uh, I feel like it has its uses. You know, if a Lingering Souls finds its way into the graveyard and it does not happen to be a Dread of Night, it's also pretty good against Snapcaster Mage. Uh, it's just a one of. Yeah. Uh, I, I like that. He's also got uh, two Vendillion clicks to add in here. Yeah, I he, think if he wants to, and he, he might he need a few that. more uh, win conditions in this matchup. It's, it right. is going to be very hard fought. Um, it's got some Nile spell bombs in there too, but I, I don't know that they're necessarily for this match. Uh, no, I don't think they are, and especially again, with, with bringing the Dread Knight, he probably doesn't need him as much. Right now, if, if Mike Flores' advice uh, was correct, saying that if Nick Spagnolo resolved a, dread, a Knight of Souls betrayal, mm -hmm. he's in big trouble. That was Flores' take on the situation. That Knight's going to remove so many of Nick's win conditions and make the, his old deck take so long that Josh has the time to. For his deck to take over, right? If that's the case, then uh, you know maybe Nick takes it out. Yeah. Um, I, I think we saw it uh, earlier in the Swiss. He was playing against one of these decks and he did not take it out. So yeah, I'd he... imagine. I, I think he keeps it. I think all right, the, just obviously like we were saying earlier with uh, Josh naturally drawing his equipment. You know, he's if he has the Knight of Souls betrayal and he's in a situation where he was like like the one he was just in, I think you just have to play it. Like you do. You, you're gonna lose otherwise. Right. Of uh, so if he's in a situation where it seems that uh, you know he, he's got to consider that mm -hmm. uh, losing his win conditions, I think you know he's got ways to brainstorm it away if he if he turned it into a live card instead of right. a dead card. Yeah, certainly. That's certainly I, I true. I think I'd rather have it just in case. I mean, I it's basically a kind of a, a day of judgment kind of thing here, uh, although <laughs> it's permanent. It is permanent. It is quite good. Um, yeah, so he doesn't have... Uh, the other card he can bring in if he wants to is Raven's Crime. Raven's Crime means that with a life in the loam, he gets to just uh, strip Ravis's hand every turn. We actually saw that happen uh, in one of his, his camera matches earlier oh. in the weekend where... I, I don't know if it was me and JVL. It was you and JVL. I was, okay. kind of, I, I was I was looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, he uh, he definitely had uh, Life from the Loam going, not with Raven's Crime, but with uh, with Wasteland. Ooh. So uh, it's it's a Life from the Loam, just a a two of. But that's a nice strategy to go on. Nice uh, nice way to lock your opponent out. Yeah. And Raven's Crime, very similar, denying different resources, but. Making life from the loam, uh, life from the loam, Raven's crime, stripping right. their hand instead of their uh, their mana base. Right, right. So get going into game two, both players in their hand, deciding whether they want to keep them. Nixon got a similarly uh, light mana hand from last time, though maybe he has a few better options than simply a handful of force wills. Josh. Doing the uh, doing, the, doing that peak peak mulligan. <laughs> yep. Now it's it's not a big problem to go peak peak mulligan. It's a big problem to go peak peak keep. Yeah, that's a <laughs> quite a different animal. Quite a different animal. People do that sometimes. <laughs> that's pretty bad. People do that sometimes. They don't they don't realize that. You know, when you're when you're playing with your friends and you know you you got a pizza and you're just you got some Mountain Dew and you're sitting around and you're like. You know, playing commander, you're like, yeah, whatever, peek, peek, keep. I'll be okay. That's fine. When you're in a tournament, you go peek, peek, keep. 
does not turn out as well. <laughs> does just really doesn't turn out well at all, actually, when we come down to it. Don't do peak, that. Peak, keep, lose, <laughs> I think peak, is uh, peak, keep, Yeah, especially it's peak, peak, keep without lie to judge. Yeah. That's even worse. <laughs> don't do that. For sure. Well, I don't think you should lie to anybody, but lying to a judge in a tournament will have uh, immediate repercussions. <laughs> Not a good idea. Uh, turns out they're pretty good at, at figuring that stuff out. And it is uh, pen, uh, punishable by a DQ and possibly a ban. So, tournament officials, tell them the truth. For those of you who may be just tuning in, I'm Joey Pasco here with Sam Stoddard, and we are covering the Invitational quarterfinals here at the StarCityGames.com Invitational in Baltimore. We are. Uh, Nick Spagnolo versus Josh Rabbits. Josh up a game right now. Uh, Nick, little little man of light, and uh, could not find an answer to any of Josh's uh, lingering threats. Nope, his souls are not going away. And this hand for Josh does not look tremendous either. No, it doesn't. Is that a one-lander? I believe it is a one-lander. Yep, he's getting... Uh, he's he's uh, Inquisition. He forces it. Uh, partially. Maybe he partially because he doesn't, doesn't want to. Now they kept a one-lander. <laughs> he's he, hoping to draw uh, the second land so he can say, oh, I kept a two-lander. Yeah, so that... Uh, Inquisition does not resolve. It, Inquisition becomes him to Torok there. It did. It um, got two force goals. And Josh... Uh, Josh cracks that flooded strand for a basic island. Is that a guru, guru island? Guru island, yeah, island yes. Very nice. Josh believes in playing uh, very nice cards. It's kind of the Cadillac of islands to get down to it. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Island being the, uh, the Cadillac of basic lands, I think. Right, Just so <laughs> it's the Cadillac of Cadillacs. <laughs> yeah. It's actually a Cadillac with another Cadillac inside of it. <laughs> And we've brainstorm. got a brainstorm. So, main phase brainstorm. Looking for another land. And he sees one. There's he sees two, two. two. He sees a surgical extraction, I think. Uh, yeah, he does. Surgical so going to be quite good here. It's going to keep any life from Lum shenanigans from getting too out of, out of control. It's gonna, but it's going it's to go on top because yeah. we are not. He is not in a position where that is going to do a whole lot. So, I think he put uh, extraction and he. I didn't see what the other card was that he put on top. Nor but. did I. All uh, right. But now we're going to find out. Yeah. Uh, it was an Inquisition. Position. Okay. Nick just uh, played a Tropical Island past Underground Sea from Josh and an Inquisition. Inquisition meets Spell, Spell Pierce. Pierce. You've got two more? No, you don't. Thanks. And Nick untaps. My turn. Appears to be about to play Tropical Island. There it is. Yep. Pass not, back. Not a lot of heat for Nick. No. Not that this deck has a lot of heat, but if it did. All right. All right. So, uh... Untap, upkeep, upkeep, draw before Vendillion main phase. Click. Yeah, Vendillion click. And I don't believe Josh has an actual way to deal with that right now. He's got a disenchant. Uh, I believe it's a surgical. It's not Look, a counterspell. Looking at these deck lists, though, you gotta, you know, speaking of uh, of Michael J, you gotta ask who's the beatdown. And I think Josh is the beatdown, deck list wise. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that. With as few wing conditions as he has, he has a whole lot more than Nick. Yeah. Uh, and so each have, copy of Lingering Souls representing uh, right. four wing conditions on its own. <laughs> uh, Nick sees Disenchant, Polluted Delta, Swords of Plowshares, and a. Um, uh, Under, uh, pol uh, pol well, you said Polluted Delta. Yeah. And uh, Josh, he wants to keep him. Wants to keep him. Josh cracks it. Uh, cracks that Polluted Delta. Gets Tundra. Shuffles away that surgical extraction. No, I think that surgical is still in his hand. Is actually in his hand. Oh, okay. I thought he Last shuffled turn. it away, but that may be what he drew. That, oh, that's, that, that is what he drew, what he drew. yeah. Yep, Swords of Plowshares. Gets rid of that uh, Vendillion click. Once again, Nick Spignolo. Pretty light on the win conditions. So, Josh, every, using every opportunity he can to try and get one out of his deck. He's going to try and sort of... Uh, Try and sort of uh, attrition him out. Yeah. Josh knows he has more win conditions, so we can just take away all of Nick's. Yep. Then take he should be in a good spot. Match him Jace for Jace, and uh, right. Yeah, keep Jace off the table. Keep Nick's creatures off the table, and that'll uh, effectively deck Nick. That's very true. Odd saying Josh is the beatdown and his. 
one of his major plans could be to deck Nick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so brainstorm from Josh. We know his hand, I believe, has disenchant and uh, not quite sure. I forgot what the other card was, but we see swords land land, and he's going to put the disenchant back along with. It looks like surgical extraction. That was the other card. Right. Uh, looks like he's going snapcast or disenchant, maybe. Yeah, he's he's changed his mind three times or two times already, but uh, looks like disenchant snapcaster is going back. Yeah. So. You do not want these. Josh's hand now, I believe, well, it is now, Snapcaster, Disenchant, Surgical Extraction, Not disenchant. Swords to Plowshares. I think Disenchant's on top. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Snap, Snapcaster, Swords to Plowshares, uh, Surgical Extraction, and uh, Land. And there's a Wasteland. This is a card that Josh uh, might be holding this extraction for. There are a few cards that he does want to get out of Nick's deck, and one of them is Wasteland. He does not want to get uh, Wasteland locked with... Um, a life from home. Yeah, I like that uh, plan. I like you, that. You know, because he wants to have enough mana basically to be able to play a Stone Forge and have a Batter Skull and protect it. Still uh, fetching up a basic land here. Yep. Keeping open uh, maybe a, a different line of play if he decides the Wasteland is not what he wants to get rid of. Has Nick seen that surgical extraction? I don't, I don't know that think he has. I mean, he knows. Oh he... wait, wait! It was his draw. For... It was Josh's draw. Yeah, for no, that he turn, has right? seen, So he has seen it. He's seen it with the uh, Vendillion Click. So Nick can play around it uh, and, and just use that wasteland as a as a mana source at this point. Right, right. All right. So uh, Nick with Snap just land go caster. Snapcaster from Josh. We imagine he's going to get a brainstorm. Oh, it gets a spell snare here. Spell Meets snare. Doom. Snapcaster goes away. Josh, thinking here. Huh? This question of uh, which lands he has in play, how he has in his lands, I don't know. Well, he played that polluted delta last turn. Oh, well, maybe oh, next turn. Oh, it. Before uh, he's saying, you know, I think maybe end of turn he wanted to wasteland it. All right. Draws on the swords. Josh settling in for the late game. Pass the turn back. Yeah, Peter has to have no plans of winning this game quickly. He's he he yep. thinks he's in a good spot with his hand. He's in a good spot to sort of attrition all of Nick's win conditions out. Nick with Inquisition of Kozilek. Josh responds with Snapcaster Mage. Uh, apparently has resolved. Rise of Brainstorm. Snapcaster. Now gets Spell Pierced. Brainstorm gets the Spell Pierce. So, uh, Inquisition still on the stack here. Oh, Spell Pierce, I believe, has resolved. Right? Spell Pierce resolves. Yeah, it definitely resolves. He's, he's looking at uh, if he wants to search or extract something. It appears. It appears that that's exactly what he's going to do. Yeah, that's what it looks like. He's probably going to get rid of something. And go uh, Swamp. Yep. He might, maybe he has enough basis now that he's not too concerned about the wasteland. It's no longer as backbreaking. So what what card does he want to get rid of? Now he wished he wants to get rid of Jason's. That's what he'd like to get rid of. It's not really an option just yet. Alright, so he's gonna cast the surgical extraction. Uh, targeting wasteland, so yep. that is indeed what he's going for. And we see Nick's hand of Dark Blast, Snapcaster Mage, Liliana of the Veil, and uh, Knight of Souls Betrayal. Yep. The card that Mike Flores went, warned would be Nick's uh, downfall. Would be next, I think. Nick's downfall to cast it. So, interesting thing about uh, Surgical Extraction. I don't know if you've ever cast it on Magic Online. I don't think I have. I don't but, remember. But uh, you have to choose the cards in the graveyard. You, you target it and target create a, a card in the graveyard, and then you have to choose it also. Oh, wow. So, like, almost a, you can fail to find you the one in the graveyard. You can fail to find the one in the graveyard, and people have talked about doing that. Um, and I guess there was a tournament I, I heard about recently where somebody did that, and they cast their extraction, they targeted their opponent's uh, waste, or, you know, card in the graveyard, mm -hmm. searched their hand in the library, removed those, the other three, left the card in the graveyard. And there, there was a question of... Uh, 
Do, does that card go away? Was the intent to remove it, or by the rules of the, rules of the game, you have to actually say, I'm removing that card from the game? Wow. But not the case here. Josh uh, removes the Wasteland. As you can see, it is turned kind of askew. Sitting there, RFG. Yeah, it's very odd because by your very nature of by the very nature of targeting it, you've clearly found it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's just odd that there's this odd uh, like but, uh, but technical. But you know, it's not a matter kind of, of failure to find. It's like choose a card and remove any number of copies. Yeah. So uh, Snapcaster in into the two. red zone. Yep. Gonna sack. I imagine he's gonna find. A, yep. Finds a uh, underground and uh, presumably is gonna dark blast that uh, Snapcaster range. Yeah, both players doing a really good job of keeping the uh, keeping the area clean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you know, pesky permanents mucking up this board. Back in uh, Cincinnati, JVL and I were doing. Uh, I think it was a mono green mirror in standard, and we were like, "Wow, this is these these aggro decks. They're too complicated." <laughs> they are very complicated. <laughs> Let's go with the control decks that can clear the board. Much simpler. <laughs> no combat math needed. Just yeah. In for two. Exactly. A Jace for Nick off the top. And uh Fate Seal. Oh, and he's right right in the Fate Seals now. Yeah, he is uh, he is using Jace, I think, as the uh, as the the win condition. condition. I think yeah. mind sculpting is uh, is what's his next like plan that. here. I yeah. like that. He's he's just gonna Fate Seal you. He's All gonna right. go straight for it. And of course Josh can fetch here to change the top card of his library. Nice little trail uh, is gonna shut off most of the cards in Josh's deck. Most of the creatures. Makes it very hard for him to kill Jace the Mind Sculptor. So, do you? I have not seen a lingering souls in, uh, in you know, when Josh has been fetching. I wonder. I mean, not that I've been looking every time. Is it possible that he boarded those out in that, anticipation of Nick's plan? That's possible. That would be. I mean, that would be some nice little next real level magic. Next level thing to do. <laughs> like, Another I, fetch I, land for Josh. I couldn't imagine doing that myself. All right. So Nick. Uh, Gonna believe Fate Seal again, yep. and uh, again, Josh has the fetch land to change the top card. So Nick says keep it. Josh says I'll change it. So I see engineered explosives. Trying yep. to take a look through. He grabs a tundra. Have you ever left a good card on top and they have a fetch land in play? Just right, I, I have done that. I love doing that kind just of so thing. Just so when they just so when they peek afterwards, and they're you're just like, like ah. <laughs> and you're like, it was exactly. It was Jace. And you're like gotcha. I left you with your own Jace on top. Gotcha. Yeah. I love, that's fun. It's just, <laughs> it, those kind of plays are actually more fun sometimes than winning a game that's yeah, you know, very are. winnable. Like, guess what I did? And another turn, Josh does not have a way to do with Jace. So, uh, imagine, you know, once you're this deep into uh, picking up Jace, you just gotta go the whole way. All right, that's 11 counters on Jace. And, and uh, it's a land on top. Only one for more Josh. turn for uh, Josh Rabbits to draw. All right, here we go. A way to deal with this Jace. Fate seal you, 13 counters on Jace, keep it again, Josh can't change it, and uh, Josh looks, it's Academy Ruins, picks up all his lands, and... Uh, and that's that game. That's that game, mind sculpted. Yep. And uh, I can't can't say I'm disappointed to see Jace mind sculpt. Uh, yeah, you want it. I, I love Jace. Of course you do, you have I affinity for blue. I love the mind sculpting. I mean, brainstorming is awesome, obviously, but... Uh, Seeing Jace, but sculpting ultimate. their deck. Yeah, that's, that's nice. What do you want left in your deck? Oh, you got a you got a land. Well, what else? That's it. Just a land. <laughs> Have fun. So, uh, JVL has said a couple times this weekend that uh, versus Nick Spagnolo, uh, J uh, JVL mind sculpted Nick, and Nick won that game. How? I don't know. It's <laughs> crazy. So uh, that's, crazy that's, that's talk. pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. That is very impressive. I like that. I like the stories. It's kind of like the guy this weekend. There was a, a tournament where, a uh, tournament, a, a match this weekend where uh, one player was playing Sneak and Show. Yeah, we talked a little bit about that. Yeah. Snuck into play in Emrakul. I don't know how Emrakul sneaks anywhere, but <laughs> he snuck into play. He attacked. He wiped out the opponent's entire board. Hit him for, hit him for 15. Knocked him to three life. Knocked him to three life. And that player still won. You know why? Because that was the only thing that the uh, sneak and choke, oh, the only creature sneak and choke I could draw was that he was pondering, yeah. he was drawing a return, he had all this time, could not get an Emrakul or Progenitus. So what happens game two? 
Game two, he gets sneak attack into play. Right. Emrakul again, sneaks into play, attacks for all his permanents, knocking his opponent to three yet again. And yet again, loses. Ugh. Loses Emrakul, not good enough. Wizards, if you're watching, we need something better than Emrakul. We need a creature better than Emrakul, because this is just <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, it is. How, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, Make it, can, just don't have, give it a casting cost at all. Yeah, free. None. It's Emrakul for free. When it enters the battlefield, uh, whenever a player would take a turn, you take the turn instead. You get an emblem that says that. <laughs> an emblem that says whenever, another, whenever a player would take a turn, and also an emblem that says you cannot lose the game. And a third emblem that says uh, zero target player loses the game. I think that last part is a little too. too but much. it's okay. We'll take that off. We'll take that off. We'll just give it. Uh, Make it. Give it a mana cost. <laughs> One, because probably you also the other interesting thing about it is you can't give the mana cost above fifteen, or you can't give the mana cost above twenty because then you just open up um, uh, erratic explosion. Yeah. Because we already have like sixteen with Drake or whatever. Yeah. Or eighteen, I think. You can't get too you can't get too high. Otherwise, you know, we're like, oh, we'll put a we'll put a thirty mana cost in this, and then we're just going to. I'm not even going to cast the spell. They're just going to go erratic explosion, kill you. I think all, what they do, they take Blight Steel Colossus. And they just put Annihilator 6 on it. That's it. Same thing, just with that. And All right. Then, then he can attack, no permanence, and Lightsteel connects for 11 Infect or whatever, 10 Infect. Lightsteel Emberkull? Lightsteel Emberkull, yeah. Lightsteel Eldrazi. We already yeah, have a name go. for it. We have, yeah. Future Sedity of Wizards, the Phyrexians, meet the Eldrazi. Mm -hmm. They yeah. each corrupt each other. Yeah. So now, uh, you get, now <laughs> all the creatures in Infect also have Annihilator. Phyrexian Annihilator, right? It black, will, black, black, black. <laughs> it will be the most popular set ever because people love sacking their permanents whenever they attack and they love dying to poison. <laughs> There's nothing players love more in the world than those two things. I mean, we've got next level Phyrexian Obliterator. We got Phyrexian Negator, then we go Obliterator, now we have Phyrexian Annihilator. Right. Which is Phyrexian Obliterator, but it's a 6 6 for, uh, for 4 black and, and has Annihilator and, 4. And if we cast them at Phyrexian Mana, they'll be really balanced because people don't like playing life. That too, yeah. You could do that. You could. It could. It's four black, but it's all Phyrexian mana. Right, right. right. In fact, what, uh, annihilator in, three. In, in fact, annihilator, annihilator three, annihilator four, something like that. Yeah. Uber obliterator. Hex, Uber negator. Hexproof. Hexproof. Of course. <laughs> you wouldn't want to get a trad because trad's not fun. No. I, <laughs> as much as uh, as much as I loved troll aesthetic, I was happy when it was a. Uh, it was a rare ability, like not not as in as in on a rare, but I mean as Every in. Every few sets. Yeah, it's fine. That's like, that kind okay, of thing. It's but a dumb green hexproof. I, I like shroud better because it makes it the tension's there. I'm I'm, I'm okay with hexproof. I as long Just as it's not on so big off, not dumb so creatures that don't do anything. Not on evasion creatures. I All actually right. I prefer shroud because it just. Because it does have that tension, where like I can't equip my guy. I yeah. like. I think that's great. I think equipment has become has obviously taken a major place in the game, and it I has. think shroud is a lot better of, of a uh, keyword because of the tension, where you, you can't you can't equip it. All very true. So rabbits on the play. First turn, flooded strand into underground sea. Does he have an inquisition? Probably. If he's doing this. He probably has an inquisition. Gonna get a, a, a quick peek at Nick's hand, see what he's got, see what he's working with, see what he's up against. Start figuring out how he wants to play this match. The deciding match of this quarterfinals. Alright, we've got Flusterstorm, not something I expected. Flusterstorm, Innocent Blood, Spell, Spell Pierce, Pierce, Brainstorm, and two lands. Three, Three lands. lands. Yeah. So, uh. Nick with, a. Uh, Reasonable keep there. Brainstorm, fetch lands, pretty good. Nothing, uh, nothing too, too threatening. So what do you take? I guess you take the brainstorm. I think I take the brainstorm. Um, yeah, I think take the brainstorm. Yeah, Josh takes the brainstorm. Uh, then Nick's probably just gonna wasteland. I have to imagine to draw something. And can I read Flusterstorm? Of course, yeah. you know, not a big surprise just to read that. Yeah. Out of a recent commander deck. So Nick could either, uh, oh, no, he no. just plays and holds back, and uh, he's uh, trying to get anything spell pierced. It does leave Josh up to if he has a Mystic right here, though. Just play the Mystic. Nick can, you know, innocent blood away, but it would at least get something else into Josh's hand.
Josh says, nope, I'm good. Your turn. Josh with the uh, Caracas to not only uh, not only protect his own Vendillion click, reuse, but he can also uh, get Nick's Vendillion clicks he can. off the table. Wasteland takes out that uh, Underground Sea. Josh unfazed, just draws another one. Yeah, like uh, no problem. Like a pro. Got that right on top of my deck. Yeah. No, you know, you, you don't need fetch lands. You can just draw them sometimes. Right. So, uh, Josh plays Flooded Strand. Yep. He's certainly probably looking to uh, extract these wastelands eventually. Yeah. But it needs to get around Spell Pierce. Alright, Underground Sea from Nick. Swords to Plowshares off the top of Josh. He's got Double Swords, Disenchant, uh, Inquisition, which is right there, off of the, uh, the yep. top deck Underground Sea the last <laughs> turn. Then Nick has a Flusterstorm, he has a Counterspell, he has a Spell Pierce. So far, only the Counterspell actually counters it. The rest of it. Spell Pierce, Fluster Storm, not stopping in position here. Yeah, they're kind of, they kind of do the same thing. They're very similar, <laughs> very similar. Very similar spells. So he's going to Brainstorm. Apparently, uh, Nick's very good at top decking the card that his opponent just got rid of as well. <laughs> Draw three, we see a Jace there. All right, so. Jason's some land, it looks like. Yeah. I imagine Nick will put the cards back here. Uh, possibly the Fluster Storm. I hope he puts a few cards back here. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be good. It's yeah. not good when you just brainstorm and don't put cards back. That leads to short tournaments. Yeah, I mean, we've already had a Ponder cast as a brainstorm. We don't want to brainstorm cast as an intentional re <laughs> yeah. recall this weekend. Each one upgrading. That was um, Michael J. Flores accidentally played a Ponder. Resolved it as if it were Brainstorm. Yeah, I think he had both in his hand. He and did, his... and uh, it wasn't as if it wasn't Legacy, and he did have the Brainstorm, but, yeah. But you cast Ponder. You yeah. gotta Ponder it. So we've got, uh, looks like Nick puts a couple cards back, cracks a fetch land, get some fresh cards on top. He'll let Josh in his hand and say, okay, what do you want? Oop. Deck trying to shuffle itself. Oh, uh, Fluster Storm now. Fluster Storm, yeah. After that brainstorm. Fluster Storm makes Josh pay three. So Extraction now that he's tapped out. It says Wasteland? Nuh uh. Get him out. I don't want to get Wastelanded. You know, that card is a huge advantage for Nick in this matchup, uh, being able to, you know, he's the only one that has Wastelands. So. Yeah, so looking at, at Nick's hand, though, here, we have Jace, Jace, Spell Pierce, Innocent Blood, and uh, Polluted Delta, so. Yeah. Those of you who uh, maybe just tuned in, Nick has a, an altered Art Jace there next to the original Art Jace. He does. In case you're looking, going, where's the second Jace? What are you talking the about? One is a character from League of Legends. Yes. There it is. I don't know who it is, but it is. Uh, it it looks. First, we thought. I thought it looked like the uh, Rorschach from. It Watchmen does look a lot like Rorschach from far away. Uh, it also reminds me of like a kind of a Final Fantasy three character or Final Fantasy six, if you uh, uh, prefer to refer to him by the Japanese numbering. But uh, yeah. And all true fans do. Let's be honest. Exactly. So wastelands extracted. Nick, Nick plays Polluted Delta, draws a uh, Force of Will, I believe, off the top. And here we have a Ponder from Josh. Ponder. What would find? Thoughtseize, Thoughtseize, Force of Will, what it finds. Wow. That will strip... If, if, if Josh keeps those cards, that is really going to strip his hand. That is going to take care of the Jace. Um... Man. 
Oh. I keep getting caught on the uh, <laughs> the tablecloth as we get here. Now, here's the risk for, for, for Josh here. If he keeps those cards, he doesn't have a, actually have a way to stop Jason from coming into play if Nick top six a land. If he keeps those cards, the next turn, he can draw the second Thoughtseize, crack his fetch, double Thoughtseize. Nick will then pretty much have not a whole lot to work with. Um, and it looks like he does keep him. And he draws, draws his card. I don't believe he has another land, so he passes. Nick, does he draw the land? It does not look like he did. He drew he life from the loam. loam. Yes, he did. That is a good one. Uh, Nick will have a couple ways, it looks like, actually, to uh, protect both Jaces from dying. To Thought Seizes. And Life from Loam can't get back Wastelands anymore, but what it can get back is a lot of fetch lands. Yeah. So, so yeah, Nick cracks a fetch, uh, casts Life from the Loam. Can he get back? I know he's got Polluted Delta sitting right on top. I believe that's another fetch, though, in between the Fluster Storm and the, uh, the Brainstorm. I think it's Misty Rain Forest. Yeah. So, Nick, it was looking, uh, looking kind of hairy for him all of a sudden. He's got a handful of cards. Those uh, yep, gets gets back to two fetch lands, plays one and passes. It was looking like rabbits might be able to use those two thought seizures that uh, the ponder found to really yeah. um, try and uh, strip Nick of most of his cards. All right, it's so not gonna happen now. thought seize number one from Josh. Nick. Nick was thinking about it. Yep, he, he got his two Jaces in his hand. He has a Force of Will, he's a Spell Pierce. And he's going to go ahead and let that one resolve. Yep. We've got Force of Will, Jace, Jace, Innocent Blood, Spell Pierce, and Misty Rainforest. Mm -hmm. So six cards there. Soon to be five, I assume you take a Jace here and then try to resolve that other Thoughtseize. I, I would assume too. And so what that other Thoughtseize is more likely going to do is take Force of Will, Spell Pierce. Well, it's going to get it's second uh, thought season. We'll just oh, it just gets spell pierce. I'm sorry, yeah. It just gets spell pierce. Unless Josh drew a land, which takes the altered one. I don't, one. I don't okay. like League of Legends. I think so. I'd take the altered one too because you know what? I think the original art's really, really good. <laughs> Again, you would. You, you you would think that. Yeah, and also I don't play League of Legends, so I don't even know who that character is. Fair enough. Maybe you should. Maybe I should, but you know. A lot, have, of, uh, a lot of people do. A lot of people like play the League of Legends. They love the League of Legends. My gaming time is spent playing Magic. <laughs> <laughs> You're a purist. I get that. It's already hard enough to uh, to find enough time to play Magic. Yep. Don't need something else taking away from my time playing. No, you do so, not. So, right. so here we go. Plays, plays second Thought one. Thoughtseize number two. This will get Spell Pierce. that one gets the Spell Pierce. And Josh says, yeah. Josh says, yeah, I kind of saw that one coming. One more land, and, and this match would be a little bit different for Josh. Yeah. One more land, and uh, he can pay for that. Uh, instead of spell piercing, uh, just Nick would have had a force of will. And he'd lose the, the uh, lose spell pierce as well. Right. And then he play. He can play a Jace, but he doesn't have any backup. Yeah, now so. all of a sudden, he's able to play a Jace this turn. But uh, he does not have force of will backup because he doesn't have a blue card besides. Well, Jace. that depends what he draws. He can, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Can at this point, I mean, yeah. Right. He can and choose he draws. A brain likes. I don't, didn't see what it was. Nor did I. Jace, the mind sculptor, resolves. Josh with the uh, wave of the hand. Looks like uh, in this, am I, am I see. Blood? I definitely still see innocent blood force. There's counterspell. There's, there's some more fetch lands. Yep. I think there may have been a mistress factory in there. Could have been. It is very fast shuffling there. Nick practicing the uh, the Kibler shuffle. Everyone wants to have the Kibler shuffle. Oh yeah, brainstorm, brainstorm from Josh. Josh. Yeah. Digging, digging, digging. I need an answer for your Jace. Spell Snare, Swords to Plowshares. So opportunistic. Uh, I think there was also a Zealous Persecution in there somewhere. Oh, interesting. He's got those, uh, he's got two of those in the board. He does. Life Alone gets alone. dredged. Dredges, uh... Dark Blast, uh, Inquisition... No land. Land. 
Jace is gonna plus two. Yeah, He's doing his thing. there we go. We're gonna try to mind sculpt again. Is he has be able to do it? Aims on, on sculpting mines. Leave it. He says, give me, uh, give me some more lands. I'll play one of them. Life from the loam. Get some fetch lands. Pass back. Disenchant for Josh. Not doing it. Uh, another blue card. And Jace. Yep. On his oh, way. Another another league on top. Yeah. Well, I mean, Josh brainstormed, so he already knows what's on top too. I think he knew. He at least knew the disenchant, and I think he knew the next card right. down too. Yeah. So Josh draws. Zealous persecution. Mm -hmm. uh, just you know, uh, I'm hearing some uh, feedback that the uh, stream is um, stuttering a bit, and so. I imagine we'll work on that very soon. Uh, there's a there's a report button uh, problem button on Twitch TV. If you want to hit that, that should help out. We'll see if uh, we can get this all fixed up. Because we know that you all want to watch this. Oh. And uh, yeah. In the meantime, <laughs> Josh realizes he is uh, on the He's road locked. to being mind sculpted. Extends the hand. And yeah. Wow. Nick Spagnolo. Two, two mind one. sculpts. Two one on the back of Jace. Jace the mind sculpt. The better match on paper held up. Yeah, that was uh, that was rough though for Josh. I feel like the.